to the young nigga. Welcome everyone to another wonderful edition of the Mac Brothers Podcast. And today we are very, very, very excited about something in particular. John, we didn't talk about this, but can you guess what I'm talking about? Uh, my uh, best friend. Sometimes he's felt like my father. And sometimes he's felt like my son. Uh, Joel Embiid has won MVP. Yeah! And it's just unbelievably happy. Uh, I actually am a little under the weather. And that's the only thing that, that kept me... Um, it's the only thing that kept me from from like going to work still and living a life. It's the only thing that kept instead me of just going laying to work. in bed, huh? Well, let's be real, John. Even when you're not under the weather, Joel and Beach usually the only thing that keeps you from getting out of bed. Like he's the only thing that gets you out of bed in the morning, anyway. Yeah, he makes it less bleak. That is for sure. So tonight is it's a uh, obviously it's Wednesday because it's the podcast and the Sixers are playing the Celtics later tonight. Or, well, not late. Well, we're recording this a little before. Um, so in a couple of hours, when you are watching this, the Sixers will be playing the Celtics or will have already played. Um, yeah. So go Sixers. Yep. I've been watching the whole NBA playoffs and the playoffs this year have been great. Besides the fact that the Sixers are five and zero so far, which is fucking awesome, you couldn't literally start the playoffs in a better way if you're the Sixers than to win all the games. Yep. Um, We're gonna win all the games, everyone. Win every game by the most amount, the biggest points ever. I score so many points in a game; they don't have points anymore. They just have a win sign with my face on it. That's it. I'm the basketball now <laughs> in chief. Can I, I got John Biden? Th- Biden would think, ah, uh, uh, bas- I'm basketball. <laughs> I'm a basketball. I get dribbled around. <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? I have to vent for a minute. The floor is yours, brother. So I want to give a big fuck you to Sony, uh, PlayStation, and their their help team they're pieces of shit and they're garbage so let me just explain so my account got hacked and they stole with uh 250 dollars ish of my from my from my debit card from my bank to buy a bunch of video games uh four video games to be precise um so i obviously called them i let them know that there was fraud on my account um i got my money back through the bank and i actually got a hold of someone it took me five hours and i got put on a call list but i was i I finally got through to someone from the playstation network and they were able to um reset my account I changed my password. I updated what I had to do, two-step verification. I went through all that through PlayStation 5. Before I was able to talk to somebody, I put an online ticket to their IT help desk or whatever, and I told them the same exact thing. My my account has been hacked. Uh, Please... um, reset this there's been fraud blah 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 so apparently so this was this this was the end of march we'll say yesterday may 1st or i'm sorry monday may 1st i get an email from playstation telling me that my issue has been resolved and that my account is now suspended And I owe PlayStation $74. You owe PlayStation $74? Yeah. I I couldn't even explain to you. Let me pull the email. I can't even understand how it's even possible. It doesn't make any sense. I said that there was fraud. Um, This was their explanation. I can't believe how fast I pulled it up. I did not 
uh, have it already saved. Hi, John. Thank you for contacting PlayStation support. Your account on PlayStation is currently suspended due to recent chargebacks initiated by the owner of the payment method associated with your account. So me, I told them that someone stole money from me, the owner of the account. A chargeback happens when your payment service provider, uh, bank, PayPal, blah, 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 reverses a payment you made because my bank reimbursed me for my money. This results in debt to us equal to the amount of the chargeback. Following our investigations, we are not aware of any lawful reason for the chargeback. As a result, your account will remain suspended until the debt is repaid. The debt amount on your account is $74.19. You, did you, did you in, the, in your follow-up email, did you threaten legal action? I didn't email them back at all. I, I, I made a new account, and I fucking shut my other one off. But I'm not paying them. Oh, yeah, money. that's fine. That's that. That's probably better. Let them fucking go fuck themselves. I couldn't believe it. That's some fucking bullshit. I mean, and I had to get a new card. My bank, PF, shout out to PFCU, repaid me back for everything. But uh, how the fuck they someone robbed them and stole my money because their servers got hacked. And they want me to pay them money to get my account back? How about you go fucking fuck yourself and die in a hole? Unbelievable. I definitely so, agree. So fuck PlayStation. Your games are great and everything else around you is a bunch of fucking... It's a bunch of horseshit. Play Sony's, Sony's PlayStation Network help team is banned from the podcast. So... I just put a straw. I opened a straw up because I have like compulsive like picking disorder or whatever it's probably called. What? So there was just a straw on the desk that like from McDonald's from like, I don't know, from months ago, but I just seen it. I grabbed it and I opened it up because I couldn't help myself for no reason. I just did it. And then I was like, well, I don't want to waste a straw. So I put it in my water bottle. That's censored. We don't we no no sponsors on this podcast unless it's uh League Island Brewing Club. Um they pay for exclusivity. So but now the straw don't I can't get it. You know? So now it's really hard to drink this water. <laughs> I had to like put my fingers John, in. John, I don't know what the fuck happened. Between like the last time I saw you, but I whatever those people at Sony are doing, maybe it's AI. I don't know what they're doing to you, John. But you're falling. Yeah, you're you're tanking, bro. Like you're you're going downhill real quick. It's been it's been a rough go. I I'm Coke you're, Frito. I, I must have. I think I have like a. Size hey one. hey, that's that's great. It could be it could be allergics as well. It could be. Well, if you're having if you're allergics. Having, you know what, though? Sometimes pollen, what happens with pollen is, John, you breathe it in and you start growing trees inside your body. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're growing a, a miniature tree inside your throat. You, probably, you, might, like... you probably just have a cold. Yeah, I think I have a cold. Stay so, away from me. Matthew. You should. You know what you should do? You should go. I mean, if, if I have, I have, I can make this happen for you if you want. Go to Sony's help center as a biological weapon. Get them all sick. Open up all their straws. Speaking of weapon. Um, Country woman's out everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> we have it's a new streaming. song, Country Woman, coming, uh, or that's already out. <laughs> uh, the music video is on the platform you're watching our faces on right now. So there's no reason why you can't just click our names at the you know bottom. Someone listening to, to our new song, Country Roman? I'm the guy from the Gorillaz video, Dare. You know, actually, if you took your glasses off, John, and you shaved, put on like a scully, you'd be the guy from Dare. Mm. 
You're actually also the guy from uh, the Country Woman music video. I am. You know, now. I like those. I like those. Um, those guys. They look us up and they, and they listen to Country Woman. They're all good people. Yeah, they really are. John, all also, and I don't know if you if you if you knew this, but um, Friday is Cinco Potato. Oh, Cinco. I'm sorry, Cinco de Mayo. You have to check up. Uh, uh, on our Instagram later to find out what Cinco Potato is. Um, but Friday is Cinco de Mayo and um, I feel like everybody should should look us up on Cinco de Mayo and they should just pay attention. I think we're, we're known in the uh, Philly music scene, the bands that played with us, uh, they know a bunch of stuff about us. One, we're threatening and dashing. Two, we stay for for the whole show unless got unless someone's really sick. I only missed one show our whole career, Acts like of God. other bands, and I was sick as a dog, um, before COVID. Um, what was it? Oh, three. We we like to have beverages while we're um uh, working. Technically, yes. when we when we play gigs, we're we're at work, and we have some beverages yes, doing them. Music music is a it is something we do for fun, but it is also something that's serious. We get paid. We for do, it sometimes. and we and and if you make money off of something, it's a career and it's a job. You're a professional. We're professionals. Yeah. So when we're working hard, sometimes it's making music, sometimes it's screaming at each other about music. Sometimes need a way to relax. We, sometimes it's when we're doing security somewhere. Sometimes it's doing we could be doing security somewhere. We could we could be filling in for someone's job that they don't know we're filling in for them. Yes. We could be doing that. But most of the time, if we're stressed, we're drinking. That's a fair that's a fair bet. I actually I'm 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 always drunk at work. Yes. But any any Mahoos, it's listen to country one. But yeah, find out. Yeah, just pay attention to our next move on Cinco Ex de Mayo. Exactly. Ex stay tuned to our social media. We're 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 um we're active. You know, there's a few things that have been going on. We're out um, here. Um. Uh. Did you see they tried to they tried to nab Putin earlier with that? That's with where that I was, little. That's where I was coming at with the weapon thing. Well, here's the thing. I I. That that may have been my fault because I was I was trying to test my arm strength earlier and I was throwing pop rocks for like really as far as I could, and I think one accidentally made it over to Russia. Listen, if anybody thinks that any major nation, I mean maybe Ukraine, could I don't know, but would you throw the little fart bomb on the Kremlin? They did like if you're going to go a... out to murder the guy, it was a drone. They tried to drone like. They try a drone. I think crashed into a flagpole or like a communications tower or something. All the is crowd. my thing. They're one of the biggest and deadliest countries in the in the world, and they don't have like an air force. Like, how did it get that close? It was oh, that was my fault, John. I'm sorry. I flew my Uber Eats fucking Amazon Prime heli uh, drone into Russia by mistake. Because Putin ordered, he ordered, uh, he ordered uh, uh, cosmic brownies on Amazon. So I was trying to deliver him his cosmic brownies. You know the ones we had in grade school. Putin has his secret affinity for them. Um, and I, I'm just not really good at flying the drone. It crashed into the, the flagpole over there. No, it's just crazy. Like, like it literally is probably, you know, it's hard to say what it actually is. But like shit like that can like fucking cause major major escalations and get a lot of fucking people killed. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's, a big dick waving contest between like fucking Putin and Biden. I don't think even remembers he has a dick anymore, but that's a whole different story. Wait, so i I don't have a I don't have I don't pay attention. I read things on Twitter for five minutes, and then I um, and then I stop paying attention, and then I read about sports for about two hours on Twitter. So about okay. Five minutes out of the two hours I'm on Twitter is uh, politics and the rest is music and sports. So um, 
what was I going to say? Is this a, is this a first of all is this is this Russia doing it to make it seem like Ukraine's attacking them so they can go full force and just demolish them? Two, uh, is it America's fault that they were going to talk peace with China and we like kind of advised Ukraine not to do it? Um, it's like such a weird thing because, um, my opinion on all this stuff is there's so much stuff that we don't know. Usually videos like the ones we saw today don't get shown to the public and more things happen like that than people know. Um, There's a lot of back channels. There's a lot of things that are actually going on. I think without question, if you're the United States, you know, NATO is basically an extension of the United States power across the globe and our alliance making. Um, Our expansion of NATO, I disagree with. I don't think we should expand NATO the way we have. The reason why Russia is at war with Ukraine is the expansion of NATO. Um, we had a really great opportunity when the Soviet Union, the Union collapsed to create a much better relationship with Russia, as a, a, a very close allied relationship with Russia. They wanted to work with us in a similar capacity to how other nations did with Lend Lease back after World War II. And, well, it started during World War II, and then you know, like the United Kingdom just paid off their Lend Lease loan in like in like twenty twenty one. Um, but we don't have progressive, empathetic policymakers. We have hawkish, uh, very defensive, very expansionist globalist policymakers from, from both sides of the aisle. Um, so I do think we bear a lot of responsibility for, um, them putting them in a position to react the way they did, um, because we kind of did back them into a corner a little bit. People forget that Russia has the same, like their economy size is similar to the size of like a country like Spain. So they're a very, they're not a very large economy. If they didn't have nukes, we wouldn't be talking about this. And they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be a threatening country. Um, China and there's there's so many other things that are that are that are in the scope of being a human and the scope of looking at things. If you just look at it numbers, the countries that are are way stronger. Like China is a way stronger country. India is a way stronger country. They're nuclear powers. Um, if we, if they're, we would, we would not be, you know, the United States response to everything is so pro military that it's just hard to, to deal with. So military industrial complex, there's no sense of nuance. Um, I don't feel responsible for as a human on a human level. I feel responsible for everyone everywhere that's at war. Um, I don't think war should be if th- I feel like we're, we should be past the point. I think it's, war is human nature, though, unfortunately. Um, and there's too many ways countries think that they have control of these things. So when something like whatever, ha- I'm, I'm ranting, I know. I'm sorry. But when something happens like the false flag or, or potential false flag at the Kremlin, it could be a fake assassination attempt on Putin, you know maybe even in conjunction with Belarus because they're strong allies. But when something like that happens, it's very hard to see the video that came out and think that that was a serious assassination attempt. And that's where it comes into, was this a false flag from either side? Um, It's hard to believe that if the United States was involved in something like that, that it would go that fucking shitty when it comes to such a high level military action. Um, Oh, I don't think, I don't think it was us at all. I well, anything that Ukraine does is involvement with us. They they they're not going to be able. Ukraine by itself wouldn't be able to uh, assassinate Putin even close to it. They they don't have the capacity without our intel. So we are involved in this war a lot more than people think we are. It would basically be like we're almost like the head coach of the war, basically. Or we're like if you're if you're a football team because football is like war, the gridiron, whatever, like the. Look up the Carlin skit about football versus baseball. That's where I'm kind of getting it from. Um, you know, if you're, it, we're like the head coach sitting up in the in the press box, or like the GM sitting up in the press box, and all the people down there are doing our work for us. All these countries are just an extension of our global influence. People forget, you know, we're we're a, 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 a hidden empire, really. When you look at how we've set up our uh, the amount of military bases we have overseas. 
And it's all to protect the, the dollar as a reserve car- currency. Uh, it's all in the interest of keeping our own power. But this is just one direction that policymakers take to keep our power that is flawed because it, it's going to wind you up in a place where there's going to be absolute catastrophes like that happened in World War II. Just, I think anyone that may be suffering from a little recency bias and is forgetting that I mean, there's people that are still alive from World War II. This is, you know, this isn't like ancient history. Like we grew up, our great grandfather and our grandfather were both in World War II. So, you know, there's Jewish people that survived the Holocaust. People still want to say it's fake. Uh, those types of things, you know, it's 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 really tough. These situations are so complicated and so nuanced that it's like it's so hard to give like a short answer to it, which kind of like leads to like overdrawn political answers from a musician that probably no one wants to hear. But these situations have things that are involved in them that the public's not even aware of, um, which is sad. But as far as what we are aware of, the as far as my opinion, the United States looks like shit here. No matter what happens, we look like shit. You should never try and nuke peace talks. I don't think even if it's a fake, you know, go along with it. You don't want to be the side that says I'm not for peace. Yeah. When we should we ever say we're the side that's not for peace? Why do why does democracy have to be everywhere? It sounds like democracy being everywhere means just, we just want to oppress everyone. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't give a fuck about democracy being everywhere. I want to live a nice life here in the United States where we actually live. That's why I think it's important, and we said it on our last podcast, it's important that you do your research for the upcoming primaries, and you should support things like DNC having debates. You should support all these things. You should support the third-party candidates. If you look at what JFK Jr. is tweeting out, some radical shit that he's tweeting out to be to be tweeting out at his level that's like shit that like got his dad killed speaking out against a, a, a war from now, the left uh, who's so RFK who's RFK if we so, have JFK Jr. alright so you know you know who JFK is yeah. I meant to say RFK Jr. so JFK oh. I misspoke so John F. Kennedy, president, his brother, Bobby Kennedy, assassinated when he was probably going to become president. Yeah. Um, Bobby Kennedy's son is the guy who's running right now. So okay. JFK's nephew is running for president right now. So a very direct descendant of the Kennedy uh, political line. Empire. Um, his vocal cords are f- completely fried. I don't know why. I don't know why he, I don't know why he, I don't know why he talks like this. Um, it's something that would probably hurt him in a debate, but not if he's going against hurt, Biden. Not if he's going against Biden. If he was going in a debate against Obama, he'd get absolutely trounced. He'd get trampled. What we really need is we you need an Obama that actually has balls. Is what you really need. Someone that's that eloquent, that charming, that charismatic, able to. Light a fire at an instant, able to light someone on fire in an instant, and someone who's really able to get where the country needs to go. That's why I look at, like, at this point, I'm like, at least RFK and fucking Marion Williamson could string together full sentences and, and, and lay out, like, s- some kind of an idea. Yeah. The way I look at it is, the way I look at it is, Biden's not going to get nothing done. So I'm going to vote for someone who I think might. Real quick, just to just to um, preface this, Biden's eighty-two and Trump is eighty. Right? Yeah, my sixty-four-year-old boss, sixty-three-year-old boss, who is twenty years younger than Biden, pretty much. He couldn't figure out why. Google was blue today, or not Google, why uh, one of the apps that we use for our work was blue. The whole thing was blue, and he called me and he asked me, he was like, I'm having trouble clicking things, everything's blue. So I, I go in there, I'm not an IT guy, I, I I don't even know computers, but I go in there and I look at it, look at the computer and I go, "You highlight everything's highlighted. 
and I clicked one button. I just right, I just left clicked on just something that wouldn't, that's not a link, and it all went away. And I said, that's all you got to do. You just got to click on something that's not, yeah. that's not a link. And then he looked at me, and he was, like, almost embarrassed. And I'm laughing at him. And he's 20 years younger than the two people that are going to be running for president. What are we doing? Fucking insane. Why are these the options? You know, after after 2020, Bernie uh, got, he, he like got real soft. I just turned the fuck off to politics. I couldn't, because I was, I was, I wasn't on like the level that you're at, but I was pretty deep in it. You know what I mean? Uh, You know, I watch it all very, you can't take it, you can't let it run your life uh, on any level, you know? Yeah, even though they they run our lives, the politicians they do, they do. I mean, they're gonna they're they're trying to figure out ways to control our mind, but they they haven't really yet. Um, I think in history things ebb and things flow. You know, you had people people just think with FDR, like the the great progressive surge was only that little short year, but when you really look at how these things came about, the progressive movements were growing in the twenties and in the, and in the teens as well. And it took them years, it took them years to grow. And it took them years to people get scared of a lot of words too. They get scared of the word socialist. They get scared of the word, you know, people are afraid of words. People are afraid of labels and that's, and that's fair. I think it's just like, you have to be able to, at a certain point in your life, look at the world as a human and think what should other humans have and once we could get to that level i i think it's a no-brainer you know you just have to support the people that are the most human forward people i think you know in any civilization things move forward if you're someone that if you're against progress you know go back and be a hunter gatherer if you don't yeah. want to take your vaccines, then go fucking go go live in one of those weird square states and die. I don't I don't care if you don't want to vaccinate your. This is what gets me. There'll be something that might come out right about, say, like the covid vaccines. There's lots of controversy around them. So all of a sudden that invalidates every other successful vaccine program in history and vaccines in general are bad. It's the generalization of modern society that is infuriating yeah. and that makes me say go fucking live somewhere else then there's countries out there with the laws you want go fucking live there you know there's another part of it it's like yeah people should you should have a conversation with them you know you should have a conversation with them i think normal people are worth having a conversation with i think if you're a politician or a super rich politician that's complaining about how bad the tax you know about oh we need to get take rights away from women. You know what I mean? Just go go somewhere else then. Yeah, that's what I. It, it's so annoying when when uh, people like the far right people are like, um, you know, I don't want I don't want the government telling me to, what I can and can't do with my life, and then they're like, but uh, no woman can do what she wants with her body. And uh, trans people should have no rights because they're not they're they're mentally ill. And it's like you say, so, so you want the government to only just let you do what you want and not literally like half of the country. Who's the sick one? Who's actually yeah. fucking mentally ill here? It's just really. Yeah. Who wants the actual freedom? Yeah. It's like at the fuck out. People don't want freedom. People want yeah. what they want based on their needs in that moment. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And if you're some shitty Republican, so, so uh, it's like George Carlin said, we reference him all the time, but he's right about everything. You know, when fascism comes to America, it's going to be smiley shirts and it's going to be T-shirts and hats and socks and sweaters and slippers and headphones and computer. It's going to be that's what fa- that's what it's going to be. It's not going to be swastikas yeah. and fucking it's it's fucking soccer moms in Montana that are fucking complaining about people that they never even met. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it is. I want to control you because I don't like what you do from what I see online. I was Get fucking over yourself. I was saying because uh, uh, I forget what we were watching, me and my woman, but um, I was like, you know, the real 
the real like like they're the only actual argument against trans people trans rights is they republic like they go ew that's their yeah, only argument. that's it that's, that's the only it. real argument but ew <laughs> you know what listen there's certain things that are common sense and if this gets me in trouble with anybody i don't care because i you know i say what i think's right and that's it um it's obvious that like the trans person that I think they were male to female um, and they, they were the, the swimmer that uh, won the, the, the transition. I don't think if you transition late in life like that or whatever the situation is, you should be able to compete in those types of sports. But I think that's something that's common sense. There's not many, there's like, 46 athletes in the whole entire of the we're the third most populous country right there's 333 million people here that's a lot of people and there's maybe like how many trans athletes in the whole country it has to be less than it has to be less than a thousand that this is actually an issue so it's like is this really a big enough issue for anybody to care about bringing up? Can you just leave these fucking people alone? Can't you just yeah. let them be fucking happy for once? Yeah. I you, look, if you want to talk about like the real conversation should be, should we, what age is appropriate to have people that are transitioning, take drugs to help their transition. You know what I mean? And scientists are the ones that should answer it, not politicians. Yeah. It shouldn't be fucking anybody that don't have a degree in whatever the fuck that is. Like I don't know the answer. And I'm it should be empathetic and sympathetic in the way and respectfully researched yeah. properly and correctly. Because there's people out here that have to live bad lives and they're living bad lives. Because, you know, they just, like you said, their only arguments, ew, like, ew, like, I don't yeah. like it, ew. So this person, like, can't live a nice life. They can't live how they want to live. Who cares? It's like uh, the the Louis C.K., another person we reference constantly, but he's usually right as well. He was wrong about one thing, pretty big thing, but uh, he's usually right in some of the things he says. Yeah, 60 when he seconds. Said, uh, yeah, he said... Um, he said, uh, people saying uh, gay gay people can't get married because what am I supposed to say to my children? And he says, I don't know. You're stupid fucking kids. You you tell them. Uh, what, what, two people can't be in love and get married because you don't want to have a conversation with your shitty kids. <laughs> he's fucking, he's he's right up. If, if Carlin's 10, a 10, he's a 9. Yeah. Or a 9.9. Like he's uh, right there. Country woman. Country out. woman. Is he out? Big Island Brewing Club sponsored a pod. Jesus's favorite beer. Go Sixers tonight. Uh, Go Sixers. Cinco de Mayo. Pay attention to what we're doing on Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Drico. Watch uh, us. Cinco Potato. Uh, that means five potato. Um, the five potato. Uh, May fourth. 